Excel has rules, invisible ones that control how every formula works. And once you know them, you'll see patterns everywhere and your formulas just work. In this video, I'll share five of those hidden rules, the ones advanced users rely on to make formulas faster, clearer, and bulletproof. I've also included an example file you can download from the link in the description and pinned comment so you can follow along as we go or use it as a reference guide in future. Now, most people write formulas that work. Pros write formulas that last. For example, the classic commission formula, monster. Nested ifs, unreadable logic, and nightmare to update. This formula calculates a commission for our sales team based on their sales amount and employment status. The logic is active employees with sales over $1,000 get 10% commission. Active employees with sales 500 and over up to 999 get 5% commission and active employees with sales under 500 get 2% commission and everyone else that is inactive, pending or those that don't have a name get zero. It works, but look at it. Imagine coming back to this in three months or worse. Imagine a colleague needs to update it because the commission structure changed. This is a throwaway formula. It works once, but it's not built to last. The first solution is the simplest, helper columns. Now I know what you're thinking, helper columns, that's beginner stuff. But here's the thing, helper columns are a legitimate professional technique. They make your work easier to understand, debug and update, and they're often more efficient for Excel to calculate. So let's rebuild that commission formula using helper columns. I'll start with a helper column to check if the employee is eligible for commission. There are two conditions, so we're going to use the AND function. The first condition is whether the employee name field is not blank. And the second one is where the status is active. Close parentheses on AND, and it returns true if both conditions are met and false if not. And now we can see at a glance who's eligible for commission. Next, I'm going to categorize each person's sales into their commission rate. And we can use XLOOKUP for this. I'll write it up here in the formula bar just to keep it out of the way. The lookup value is the sales amount. Where are we looking it up? Well, I have a table over here that has my sales bands and rates. So we're going to look up the sales band column. You can see the table's called com rates and it's using the table structured reference with the column name. Comma, I'm going to return the rate. But notice that only the bands are listed in the table, not the exact sales amounts. That's okay. I'm going to skip the next argument, which is if not found. And here in the match mode, we can tell it to find an exact match or the next smaller item. So it's going to scan the table for 320. When it doesn't find an exact match at 500, it's going to go down to the next smaller value and it returns 2%. So you want minus one, close parentheses on X lookup. Let's copy it down. And now I can easily calculate my commission. I'll use the if function to check if they're eligible. So if F5 contains true, then we're going to take the sales amount multiplied by the rate. Otherwise, they get zero. Close parentheses on if. Let's double click to copy it down. And now we have a much clearer flow of the logic, which is easier to explain, debug and update. For example, if I want to change the commission bands, let's say I want sales to be over 1500 to get 10%, and over 750 to get 5%, I just update the table and it feeds through to my formulas. No more work to do. Now, technically, this if formula works just fine, but here's the thing. We don't actually need if at all. The true and false values here have an equivalent numeric value. True is the same as one and false is the same as zero. So instead of writing if here, let's get rid of if. All I need is my calculation of sales times the rate times whether they're eligible. In this case, this is going to be the equivalent of one. And for this row here, it'll be the equivalent of multiplying by zero. And we know that anything multiplied by zero equals zero. So let's copy it down. And we can see these two still return zero because we're ultimately multiplying the calculation by zero here, which returns zero. It's just cleaner, faster, and easier to read. And that's Boolean logic in action. If you don't want to see those helper columns, the let function gives you the same clarity inside one formula by enabling you to name variables. And these act like invisible helper columns, so your logic reads like a sentence instead of a puzzle. Let me show you. To write this formula, I'm going to first Control Shift U 
to make the formula bar bigger and I'm going to write it up here. So equals let and then I'm going to alt enter down onto the next row and that just allows me to write this formula in a clean tidy way that's easy to read. My first variable is whether the employee is eligible and remember we use the and function to check if the employee name field was not empty comma and whether the status equals active comma alt enter down onto the next row. The next variable is the rate and remember we used XLOOKUP for that. What are we looking up? We're looking up the sales amount in the sales band column and returning the rate. We're skipping the if not found argument and we want to find an exact match or next smaller item which is minus one. Close parentheses on XLOOKUP comma alt enter. So that's all our variables defined. Now I simply enter the formula which is whether they're eligible. Notice it comes up in the IntelliSense, so I just tab to insert it. Multiply by the rate, there it is there, lowercase rate, multiplied by the sales amount. Close parentheses on let, press enter, and let's copy it down. And I get the same result, but see how each component has a name, and you can read it top to bottom like a recipe. So if something breaks, it's easy to debug line by line. Now I have an entire video dedicated to let where I break down the syntax in detail, show you how to debug let formulas, when to use it versus named ranges, and cover performance benefits. If you want to master let, check out this video or you'll find the link in the description. For now, just know that let gives you the clarity of helper columns without needing the extra columns. What if you want a less experienced Excel user to calculate commissions? With Lambda, you can create custom Excel function, much like SUM or XLOOKUP, that simplifies the inputs, enabling the user to just plug in the values. I'm going to copy LET as my starting point, and then on the Formulas tab, we store our lambdas in the Name Manager. I'm going to create a new name, and you can see it's Input Commission, but I want it in uppercase, so let's replace that. And then in the formula, it's going to be equals lambda, open parentheses. Now the commission calculation requires three inputs, the sales value, the employee name field, and the status. So I'm going to name these inputs. And then I just paste in my let formula, control V to paste it in. Let me go back to the beginning. And all I need to do is replace any cell references with the names I defined. So C5 is the name, E5 is the status, D5 is the sales, and if I just go to the end, I've got one more reference here to D5, which is sales. And then at the very end, I just need to add another parentheses for Lambda. Click OK. There's my custom function. Close the name manager. And now instead of this let formula, all I need to do is use my new function. It's there in the IntelliSense. Tab to insert it. And it tells me the variables. So sales is D5. Name is C5 and status is E5. Close parentheses, press enter, copy it down. I get the same results, but this is super easy for users of any level of ability. If you want to go deeper into everything we've just covered, like building modular formulas, mastering let, using Lambda to create your own custom functions and more, I've got a full advanced Excel formulas course that walks you through everything step-by-step. And since it's Black Friday week, you can get 20% off all courses until December 4. You can find the links in the description and pinned comment. All right, let's talk about the shift that changed everything in modern Excel, thinking in arrays. If you learned Excel before 2020, you were taught to think row by row, write a formula in one cell and copy it down. And that's how Excel worked for decades. But dynamic arrays changed the game. And if you're still thinking row by row, then you're working 10 times harder than you need to. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a common task. I want to see all active employees from our commission data sorted by sales amount, highest to lowest. Now I could go to the data tab and add filter buttons and then go in and sort that largest to smallest. And I want to filter out any inactive or pending employees. And there's my data. But if I add a new employee, Riley Barrow, his sales are 3075, he's active, and we'll copy down the commission. Now I have to go back up to the data tab and reapply the filters. It works, but it's fragile. So let's control Z to undo all of that, because the new way is with array formulas. The first thing I want to do is convert this data into an Excel table. So on the home tab, format as table, 
and I'm just going to go in with this light style. It's detected my table has headers, click OK, and let's rename this sales data. All right, now that that's formatted, it's going to make it easy for my formula to capture any changes. Over here, I'm going to use an array formula to first sort the results. What am I sorting? Well, I'm going to use filter to extract the data from my table. And remember, we called it sales data, so it references the table structured reference. Comma, what are we including? Well, where the status equals active. Comma, and what if it's empty? Well, if it's empty, we'll return some text that just says no records found. Close double quotes, close parentheses on filter, and then comma for sort. Remember, we want to sort by the sales amount. Well, that's the second column. And what order? We want to sort it in descending order, which is minus one. Close sort, press enter. And with one formula, we have a filtered view of the data. Plus, when your data changes, for example, let's add Riley Barrow and his sales 3075 and he's active. Notice Riley's automatically added and sorted in the correct order. So what actually happens when you use a function like filter or sort? Well, the formula lives in one cell, in this case, cell J7 but the results spill into the cells below and to the right. Excel automatically creates a spill range, and here's what you need to know. You can't type anything in the spill range. If you try to type something in, for example, let me add something in this cell here, and press enter, you get a spill error, because those cells are reserved for the formula's output. To clear the spill error, simply remove the obstruction, and the formula spills again. Two, the formula adjusts automatically. We already saw adding a new employee automatically includes it, but we might also change an employee status, for example. We change Gabe Lewis from inactive to active, and instantly he's added to the list. And three, when you reference a spilled range, you don't need to reference all the cells. Just reference the first cell, followed by the hash key. And this tells Excel to reference the entire spilled range, not just cell J7. So when I press enter, we get the same spilled results again. And this is super handy for nesting in other functions that you want to automatically update as that spill range changes shape. Before we move on, let's talk about when arrays aren't the answer. So don't use arrays when a simple sum or average will do the job. For example, don't use sum with filter when sum if or ifs is clearer. If you're working with massive data sets, I'm talking hundreds of thousands of rows and more, array formulas can slow down. So sometimes Power Query or pivot tables are better. Or if the logic is complex and needs transparency. For example, if your filter formula has five conditions chained together, consider whether a helper column would make it easier to debug. Dynamic arrays are powerful, but there's one more skill that separates good spreadsheets from great ones, and that's performance. Because not all formulas are created equal, some recalculate instantly, while others slow down your entire workbook, especially as your data grows. So if you've ever wondered why certain functions make Excel lag, or which ones to avoid in large files, that's exactly what I cover in this video. You'll learn how to identify volatile functions, optimize calculation speed, and design formulas that are fast. I'll see you there.